Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. I opened and I did okay. She did just fine. <laughs> and before we get going, we do want to invite you to go ahead and subscribe and check to make sure you are still subscribed to both channels, Evolutionary Energy Arts and EE Arts. And Evolutionary, every time we mention that, they, there's more uh, that goes yeah. backwards. It just is what it is, folks. It is what it is. They don't like the truth. They can't handle us having the truth. That's the bottom line. Mm -hmm. That's right, because we hand it to you. Because we give you the truth. Yes. And that's something that goes against their plans. It, it does. It really does. It really harms their pocketbook. And they don't like talk like this. Do you remember the movie Avatar? I think there's going to be two new ones coming out shortly. It took a long time. This is, I believe, the number one movie of all time as far as box office receipts. It was pretty cool. And many people, it was an eye-opener. And the idea that we could transfer our consciousness from one body to another. But in the East, that's just part of the, you know the main philosophical religious traditions that we find in the Eastern mind. Well, the East, they, they have a deeper understanding. But when it, when this movie first came out, I didn't watch it because I heard that it got bad reviews. So I missed all this all this wonderful time and all of these DNA. I don't know. I got like upgrades and I got all kinds of information when I watched this. It just really, really clicked everything into place for me. So Avatar, Avatar, we're familiar with the computer games and taking on an Avatar to be your persona in a game and building that Avatar. You know, maybe you want them to be super strong, super smart, super fast, super whatever. It, it's up to you. You create your being that you want to play when you're in a certain computer simulation, right? A computer simulated reality. Psychology Today article here is talking about the Avatar Theory of Consciousness, Neurophysiological Explanation. And basically, what does it say? You know, it says, yeah, you know, it, if we get to know ourselves and we could improve certain things, we could re reprogram ourselves. That's true. And in many ways, well, we can definitely override genetic tendencies. However, ultimately, they believe in the traditional western tradition that consciousness is a byproduct of the physiology it, it, it's the chemical reactions it's the fact that we have a larger brain than some of the primates that supposedly went before us is is why we have a consciousness like we do yet you know animals show emotion surely obviously they, they show emotion. They show reasoning. Monkeys have used tools. Uh, other animals have used tool, tools too. I mean, raccoons. I've seen raccoons washing their food and, and things like that. And over here in this article, they talk about the first humanoids had smaller brains. It takes significantly more neurons and connections to run, you know, an unconscious mind. And you need so much processing capability. But is is that really what distinguishes us from others? Because now we've learned that Neanderthals and Denisovans both have bigger brains than we do. And yet they make them look like brutes, beasts, and something that's half human, half animal. They are totally misrepresenting what these beings were. They were actually physically stronger than us. And they were, well, they had a much larger cranial capacity than we did too. Could it be possible they were actually more intelligent? Could it be possible that they actually had different capacities for reasoning than we did, than we do? Perhaps even superior in some ways? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I think it's their job is to create these beings and make them look a certain way so that we think, oh, well, we're, we're far better than they are, you know, and I just don't think that's the case. No, absolutely. And we see there's an avatar project. It's aims for human immortality by 2045. But what really is immortality? If you're talking about death and you believe that when you die, there's just nothingness, absolute void. And then, of course, you know, you, you, you might want to continue your consciousness unless you're absolutely miserable. 
in which case in some people have been to the point where they would rather there be nothingness than be going through what they're going through. But here, what they're trying to achieve is something very, very different as we see their timeline. And this article is was out in 2012, so this is an older article. 2015 to 2020, a robotic copy of a human body remotely controlled. Yeah, we got we we've seen those drones. We've seen all sorts of robotics nowadays. It's all going to a new level. Uh, do you want your consciousness put in something like that? No, I don't. 2020, 2025, avatar in which a human brain is transplanted at the end of one's life. But would your consciousness really go with the brain? Would it? 2030 to 2035, an avatar with an artificial brain in which a human personality is transferred at the end of one's life. And then 2040 to 2045, a hologram-like avatar. The roadmap to immortality. This is the big sales job. This is the biggest sales job. Everything else we see going on, again, is kind of secondary. You know, we see food shortages. We see economic collapse. We have the threat of, you know, WW3, all these things going on. What it really is all about is is buying into the hive mindset, buying into AI collective, becoming part of the Borg, and not going the way that nature had intended. This Australian man was in a coma. Then he woke up all of a sudden speaking fluent Mandarin. That was quite an amazing new skill. That's not an easy one to learn. You know, uh, Spanish, French, they're much easier than uh, somebody going from English to trying to learn Mandarin. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, it sure is. I mean, it's really incredible what might be lurking inside that mind. Absolutely. Three-year-old Drew's boy who identified his past life murderer. Oh, boy, does it get interesting when we start looking at this. And a birthmark in reincarnation. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, there have been so many cases, this is another one, of um, a boy remembering details of his past life as a Hollywood actor. And another person, young boy in Glasgow, Scotland, remembers his past life on remote Scottish island. Actually, you know, there's so many cases of this. Um, I believe it was John Mack. Wasn't it John Mack that did Life After Life? I'm trying to remember. Brian Weiss did, did one. That was a good book. Brian Weiss. Um, John Mack did a lot on ETs, extraterrestrials, but I thought he had touched on the whole fact, too, that many of the abduction phenomenon experiences, the physical body's left there, but then the physical body might have marks on it. The consciousness might be taken right up through the roof, and the person's out of body, but when they come back, there's marks on their body. And I think that's fascinating, isn't it? It sure is. You know, it, it says a lot about when we are working on people and suddenly I maybe I get a pain on my back or Mike gets a pain in his heart and we mention it to someone and they're like, well, yeah, there is a problem right there. So what are we communicating with? Who are we communicating with? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there was a comment on our like last video we did on evolutionary where somebody was warning about communicating with your guides because they're probably the CIA or the FBI. Um, no, we, we know who our guides are. We, we, we remember from past lives and just the interactions that have gone on, the feeling of the energy. So, yeah, we do recognize there is that type of technology where, you know, they can make it sound like you're hearing voices in your head. But there's been so many cases um, and me and Cindy together, I don't know, how many people do you think we've worked on energy-wise? And I, it, it Probably in the thousands now, in the thousands for sure. And then before I was with Cindy, I had worked on thousands. And I remember uh, this gentleman in Africa that a friend of mine uh, contacted me and said, I'll pay for you to work on him because he doesn't have any money. He's, he's in a very poor town. And they don't think he's going to make it through the night. He had malaria. And he was like about 19, 20 year old boy. And they didn't think he was going to make it through the night. And we, we have, I worked on him energetically. Well, I shouldn't say even I. It's it's the guides that are with me. So these, these guides, I don't think it's the FBI and the CIA that helped him when he woke up in the morning. 
he was fine. He had broken, you know, he, he just, he, he was not able to go into a deep sleep because he was so feverish and uh, just his consciousness was so in such a stressed out manner. As soon as I started to work on him, he just calmed immediately and he, he sat up and looked over towards the, um, the phone because I was watching him and focusing on him. And then he laid down and went soundly asleep and woke up and he was fine. And it it was the guides that are helping. They're always working with us and they're helping to transfer energy and they're, they're taking what I can channel and they amplify it. And it's the same thing with me and Cindy now that we're together. Her guides, my guides work together and they amplify whatever we put out there. So without them, we couldn't be even remotely as effective, not even close to as effective. And that certainly isn't the CIA, the FBI. That's not uh, DHS. That's not DOD. That's that's not KGB. It's not CCP. No, no, no. These are beings on a very high vibrational frequency that are benevolent because they've helped thousands of people that we've worked on over the years to overcome all sorts of things. Right. And, you know, I mean, the most recent one, we worked on a dear family member, um, Leah, and we even asked for prayers and help. And she had blood panels done before we worked on her and asked and then after and everything was better afterwards. Yeah. And while while we're thinking about that, let me go grab my phone real quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and Mike can pull that information. So there's definitely something to this. And there's one thing I wanted to mention to you guys um, a few days ago. I, I just want you to think about this because many of you reached out to me and you were very, very kind to me. I was talking about my daughter's wedding. She got married on 4 and I broke down in tears and I just started crying. And so many of you were said that you had cried too. You could feel feel my energy and this is what's happening to us this is this is going on happening more and more and more and remember uh this was after uh, a bunch of little sun sneezes where the guides had said okay we're going to get upgrades but i just wanted you to have an energy signature understanding of what it is when you feel someone's someone else's energy and you guys felt my energy and i was really humbled and touched thank you that was beautiful so this is our dear friend Leah, and I've worked on her by myself, and and she's also uh, been worked on by me and Cindy. So she just wanted to thank us um, for everything that was done, and really, it was really all the guides, honestly. Mm -hmm. I mean, we just focused for a little while, and, and often the guides will start to work on people before we have. It's just like we get the mindset, too. Mm -hmm. Like if somebody went and, and set, set a, an appointment up and we say, okay, you know, we're going to see you on Thursday at 2 p.m., then sometimes they, they start to feel like somebody's working on them right away. And, and that's the guides even before we are. Yeah, I, uh, we've kind of referred to it as time bending lately. <laughs> so she had sent um, a series of different ones. Um, she was in the hospital with uh, heart issues, and she she has actually been clinically dead before. I've spoken of her as one of my friends that spent time on the other side, and she was embraced by Yeshua and felt his love. and And she is also, and it's interesting to note, her and her husband, uh, you know, they're like brother and sister to me. Um, they are both basically practicing Hindus, and yet they have Yeshua as as you know, a guide and somebody that they absolutely love and do pray to. And that's that's also the way it is in, in, in the Hindu system because they recognize that there's benevolent beings from every tradition. So she said, I just want to say thank you for all your prayers and, and energy. All my labs went from bad on every important point, thyroid, kidneys, creatine, EKG, to normal overnight. Love you. Thanks again. And... Um, you know, the next day I, I said, oh, that's great news. We're so happy to help. And she's just came back. Ah, thank you so much, Michael and Cindy. And yes, Cindy is blessed and gifted. The same time as I was taken down, so was a dear friend in her 40s. Same thing, onset of oppressive chest pains. Thank you and Cindy again. I'm taking it easy. And thank you for your prayers and energy. As a living testimony, I saw my PC on the 14th. And my, my labs then, before hospitalization, compared them to after the work. And it happened to be on uh, 
Easter. Mm. <laughs> it was mm -hmm. on the Easter weekend. Kidney function before 44 point, 44, <clears throat> after 59. Creatine 1.29, after 1.0. Um, LDL before 169, after 128. Non-LDL 201 before, after 138. Triglycerides 196 before, 77 after. Total cholesterol 252 before, 190 after. Major healing within hours and with zero drug intervention. Zero. Only medicine was prayer, well wishes, energy, mm -hmm. for which I'm eternally grateful to you and to God. And yes, the AKG went from abnormal overnight, and all the enzymes were made excellent by God's sweet spirit, and all the wonderful and powerful prayers offered up. And the ER docs are calling it a mystery. We know it was uh, God's tender uh, love and miraculous touch. So blessings to you, Sassy, Rama, and Sita, and of course, Cindy, and guardian angel, Zeke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so she says, verifiable evidence of the power of, of prayers and energy that you two angels do. So she, she said to go ahead and could use her name. And um, it d just thought I would mention it at this point in time. So, you know, are our guides the FBI and CIA? Hell no. You think they're going <laughs> to have the ability to do that? No. Right, right. Is it the Draco? Is it the Red? No. Mm -hmm. Obviously not. Well, you know, I mean, we do put in time to uh, grow our energy body. So there is something to that. A lot of m mantras, a lot of meditation, exercise, eat right, keep your vibration high. Because we do this thing called entrainment. And when you attach to someone energetically, you're bringing up their vibration along high enough with yours. And it causes physical changes. Absolutely. And again, we are consciousness itself. That's why... All these little boys and, and these kids, they have memories of past lives it's because they had past lives. It's just that simple. They've had past lives. And only in the Kali Yuga do we not remember the past lives. In the other Yugas, the other ages, we remember these type of things. And uh, this one's from Gaia talking about Matthias de Stefano, who remembers his past lives. And um, he's, he's interesting to listen to. Um, I have suspicions about, you know, the ultimate goal with uh, Gaia and all. Um, th but there is a lot of good stuff that they put out. They put out a ton of good stuff. Absolutely. You know, it, it's consciousness expanding. But all this is, is explained when we go into the Sanatana Dharma. You know, Vishnu has had many avatars, Krishna, Rama, but also Narasinga and the avatars as other entities that were not purely even human. Which, when we look at the evolution of a soul, because everything does evolve. It's not Darwinian evolution. That's, again, where they take something that's true and they twist it. And then people throw the whole idea aside. Because they say, no, we're, we're not coming from monkeys, and they can't conceive of anything but. Well, no, Darwin was a 33rd degree mason again, but it doesn't mean things don't evolve. Everything is about evolution. Mm -hmm. Everything is about evolution. doesn't mean we came from monkeys. Right, you know, and, and when something happens to our physical body and even emotionally, that little uh, ding or that little scar is put upon you energetically and that's why we can have memories from past lives is because our energy body holds all of this information into the like i guess some people could call it the akasha but it, it just it holds with you and that's why we're born sometimes with certain birthmarks that might look like something that happened in a, a prior life yeah and that gets into the different layers of the body and we've quoted this from the bag of Gita many times as a person puts on new garments giving up old ones the soul similarly accepts new material bodies giving up the old and useless ones and it's just like when the when your avatar in the game dies boom game over okay well what do you want to do now i don't know let me think about that i'm going to create a new avatar this time i learned that you know maybe i need to be a little bit more prudent maybe i need to experience life in a different country or maybe i need to experience life on a different planet mm -hmm. You know, it's it's all just a matter of evolution and choice. 
and also karma to a degree. Um, here you see the body is again like those Russian dolls and the physical body is just the innermost layer. When that dies, it's not like you're not there anymore. No, the, all these other layers are still there. You still exist. You are consciousness. You are energy. And this is just basically what we operate when we're on third density and, and that density is changing. Did you know the human heart's magnetic field can be measured? several feet away from the body. In fetal development, the heart forms and starts beating before the brain begins to develop. Here we're, we're thinking about the brain, the brain, the brain, but, but the brain is not the be-all, end-all. You know, there's, there's as much, if not more, intelligence in your gut mm -hmm. than there is in your brain. Negative emotions can create nervous system chaos, but positive emotions do the opposite. That's why we're kept in a fear-based society. Positive emotions can Im increase the brain's ability to make good decisions. You can boost your immune system by focusing on positive emotions. That's why if they keep us wrapped up in negative news, negative everything, well, you know what? We're going to lower our immune system. We're going to go running off and creating a lot of money for those MD period people and, and big F-A-R-M-A. So again, positive emotions create physiological benefits in your body. And we would love to just speak about all this stuff all the time and not talk about the news. But for us, you know, the main part of our job is, is awakening others to think outside of their boxes, to start to look more into the stuff that we talk about over on E.E. Arts. Chakra analysis, and you could see the chakras. These are whirling vortices um, that are pulling in energy all the time. They're not only nurturing the physical body that you see but also the other layers the energetic side of things we know from Kirlin photography that you know chakras are real these are chakras look at the ends of fingertips there's chakras in the fingertips there's a big one in the middle of the palm so I just wanted to do a quick exercise when I first started learning energy work um, they had me do a simple exercise like you know just rub your hands together really really fast and do that for, I don't know, maybe 20 seconds and then pull your hands apart and just sit there and feel all of that tingling in the palms of your hands. You just activated all of your chakras and you can feel it now. And I think that's so exciting. Absolutely. And, and many people can actually see the energy field if they just look past the object you want to see the field of and just let your eyes kind of blur and just relax. And often you'll start to see kind of like a, a glow around the edges, whether that's trees. I mean, trees up against um, twilight, when the sun is going down, it, it can be pretty easy to see the energy uh, coming off the trees. The trees are conscious. Every plant you eat, you know, that head of lettuce, that's conscious. Everything is conscious. Everything is consciousness. There's, there's really nothing that's not. Even even a book has consciousness because again everything is everything is energy and, and it's just changing forms. This is science. This is real. Or a photography back in 1939, Russian photographer uh, Kirillin invented a camera to take the photograph of the human aura. So we have Kirillin uh, photography, and it's real it's science there's no doubting it and you know you will have people still to this day less people now than in past decades as the west has been totally in the dark for the most part uh, you'd have to be deep within the mystery traditions like studying the kabbalah studying hermeticism western mystery tradition to start to you know learn things i think back um to franz barden's book and his book was the first esoteric book on hermeticism uh, that I ever read. And it was just basically le left in the house that we moved into when I was going into third grade. And so I couldn't really understand it, but I kept at it until I could understand it. You know, seven or eight years old. And what's it talking about? It's talking about yoga. Yes, yoga from the, hist from the Hindu um, Vedic system and it, it's esoteric again to the Western mind and so many people would think well auras and you know chakras things like that oh that's so new agey woo woo well that's only because you're believing the, the controllers 
who wants you to think that you only live once, you die, and then that's really it. You're going off to hell, or you're going to you know, live in purgatory, or you have to wait till the dead are resurrected. That's really not how it works. That's the controllers speaking. And they're giving you that point of view because if you think that you know your eternal resting place or your eternal destiny is something that is controlled by your belief set and you better believe in the official version if you if you if, you know hey if the church excommunicates you you're going to hell for all eternity that's if you really believe that you're their property mm -hmm. well and, and, and unfortunately so many people do and they go into it believing at such a young age so sometimes it's so hard to step out of the box of that belief system because now your ego your whole survival mechanism is taken into it because if, if you believe in these other things you're just gonna burn in hell forever and i just think that's so so wrong to do that to people absolutely you know as we see the energy coming off of leaves palm mushrooms it's everywhere and we could see people's auras here and when you look at an energy field like this this one's all disrupted so this person's probably not feeling so good mm -hmm. And, and I just want kind of want to use this as a great example for when we do energy work and repatterning. A lot of times we get people and they have all these blocks and all these issues in their energy field. And we go through and we align them. And Mike, Mike uses his very, very powerful energy. And I'm using the tuning forks. And I do these repatterning. And we bring it to a state where it's very, very chaotic there on the left in, into a, a state of... Um, perfection you know it's perfection and that's what we get with the soul alignment and a repatterning so here to the left he's not getting all the information he needs these are blocks these are errors so information might come into his energy field but it has to take another route to get to the body but once we make that energy whole now body mind soul can get all the information it needs to actually move forward and heal itself completely over time and with practice, with meditation, with qigong, yoga, things along these lines, you can sense when, you're in a, when your particular chakras are, are shut down because you'll feel disconnected. Um, you might start feeling kind of irritable and miserable in many ways, or you might feel lethargic and, and heavy. It's, it's amazing once you're able to sense the individual chakras and then they're open up, all of a sudden you could feel the energy flow flowing through. Mm -hmm. And this is where we're going. It's, it's going to be easier and easier as we go deeper and deeper uh, into the new age, which is upon us and out of the Kali Yuga because of all the cosmic rays coming in and the sun's rays, which are opening up our consciousness, expanding our consciousness, kind of putting us back online when we've been taking, taken offline. Mm -hmm for thousands of years by the control system, by the control grid. This is why those towers are up. This is why everything is being done. It's being done to suppress your consciousness, to keep you thinking that you are nothing but a body. You know, this is perhaps the only life you'll ever have. You know, when the time comes, you better transfer your, your consciousness into some sort of avatar. Yeah, let us get a hold of it. Let us keep it here. Yeah, that's not immortality. That's being trapped. Mm -hmm. That's a trap. That does scare me. Mm -hmm. That does make me feel really uneasy. And uh, I, I don't like that thought at, at all because it's the natural cycle of things. Just as trees, you know, go through the seasons and they shed their leaves, but they know they're going to have a new set of leaves to draw in that light and create that photosynthesis next spring. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with us. You know, we let go of one body and, you know, if we want to and it's part of uh, our path, then we'll take on another bo body. And in some cases, like where we're heading into ascension and, and you'll have many people going and experiencing fifth density many uh will probably choose to not come back down to third at least for quite a while mm -hmm. all right you know a lot of people what they do is they go to this place where where they're resting but you know you're resting and you're healing and you're only gonna do that for so long before you wish to go on another journey but 
you know i think that energy is amazing and all of you guys that are always listen with us you guys have been amazing and you have grown with us and you know we really appreciate it and we hope you take a look at our other other videos so you can learn a little bit more about the energy yeah and and we do have on both channels the uh, energy healing qigong meditation and then this one healing through energy work qigong meditation reiki so you know please do check them out and expand your consciousness perhaps some and maybe learn some techniques and some ways to uh, self-heal again we are emotional beings we're emotional beings on the other side your emotions don't don't go away because the physical body mm -mm. you know is no longer there right when you when you're attached to your higher self you're now getting that information back and forth to guide yourself to your own full healing that's the most important is just full healing not just a band-aid for a while but completely healed absolutely so hope that you guys found this interesting if you have um, any questions feel free to reach out to us evolutionary energy arts at gmail.com or eearts at protonmail.com do check out our website as well evolutionary energy arts.com and you know feel free to we have a lot more uh, testimonials we have to upload i just haven't gotten around to it um, but read some of the testimonials too to to heal about some of the things you know that we have helped others with uh, throughout time. And we do want to thank you guys for your support on Patreon and Ko-Fi. And also check out Medicinal Foods. There's a link on every video up at the top. Use coupon code EEA. They have a lot of stuff that could help your body. Most definitely. It boosts the immune system. Detox. And uh, as always, much love. God bless and namaste. Namaste.